Hey guys, um, I'm recording on my little laptop right now, so the video is not quite as good as normal, but uh, it's more convenient today, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to talk today about different ways of cycling a tank, um, and I'm going to split it up into a couple different videos um, so that it's a little easier for you guys to pick what parts you care about. Um, and so, um, this video, I'm just going to talk about the stuff that's kind of in common between all of them, and then, uh, you can watch the other videos, uh, to get details on a few different methods of cycling. Um, I'm familiar with, really, three different ways of cycling a tank. Um, there's a fourth way that I've heard of that I don't know anything about, um, so I'm not going to have an instructional on that one, obviously. Um, that fourth method, just so you know, is called a silent cycle, um, which is a way of cycling your tank through the use of plants. Um, there are lots of plants that will do similar jobs as the bacteria do in a normal cycle, and um, I don't really know anything about it. I know it's a lot more advanced because you need to have um, the right lighting conditions and the right CO2 and the right fertilizer and blah 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 to support the right mix of plants and then you got to pick out the right kind of plants that absorb the right kind of stuff and it's nothing I know the details about so look that up elsewhere if you're interested um, I would consider that not for beginners um, the nitrogen cycle um, is what this is all going to be talking about um, the nitrogen cycle is uh, generally a three-piece cycle that happens in every fish tank. Um, and that is uh, ammonia. starts out with ammonia, which gets created by your animals, um, primarily through their waste. They excrete it. Um, it also comes out, um, gets excreted through their gills as they breathe. Um, so the ammonia starts everything off. The next stage in the cycle is the ammonia gets broken down into nitrites. Um, that's the nitrite with an I. Um, the way that happens is bacteria grow and colonize your filter media. Uh, they colonize really all the surfaces of your tank, but primarily the filter media. Um, and they break down the ammonia into nitrite. Then, once that's been been done, now you have nitrite in your water, now different bacteria grow and colonize your filter media and they turn the nitrite into nitrate with an A, nitrate. Um, that process is really really important um, for um, really the main reason is because the first two steps of that process, ammonia and nitrite, are extremely toxic. Uh, they cause your fish to be unhealthy, they cause them to be really stressed out, and they cause them to die um, at really low concentrations. Nitrate, the last step, is far less dangerous. It's still dangerous in high enough concentrations, but it's much less dangerous than the first two steps. Um, and having a good cycle going that uh, causes these conversions to happen allows you to have um, sort of a... a a reasonable maintenance cycle in your tank. Um, if you don't have proper bacteria colonization causing this cycle to progress, then the only way to get rid of the toxic levels of chemicals is by doing water changes. And um, if you haven't got any cycle set up whatsoever, you'd have to do water changes like every two to three days in order to combat the toxic levels. Um, which is really unreasonable. I mean, that would take an enormous amount of time for you to do constantly. So getting your cycle set up and being mindful of it so you take care of it and preserve your bacteria is very important. Um, the um, Let's see what else is going to be in common between all these. The bacteria themselves form and colonize on the surfaces in your tank. Um, really all the surfaces. If you reach into a tank that's been set up for a while and the decorations have that little bit of a slimy coating, that's the bacteria. That's good stuff. You don't ever want to scrub that off. 
and you don't ever want to let it dry out because drying out will kill the bacteria. You don't want it to freeze ever. Um, you know, like if you're transporting stuff, like you're moving and you everything freezes in the truck overnight or whatever, then uh, you've killed the bacteria. Um, so um, the bacteria colonize all the surfaces. They don't live in the water itself. The stuff they're eating lives in the water itself. The ammonia, the nitrite, and the nitrate is in the water. The bacteria are on the surfaces. Um, they're the primary way that these bacteria get what they want for food, which is what we want them to do, is they the the bulk of them will live in your filter media, and as your filter pumps water over them, they absorb what they're eating out of the water and spit out what they're converting it to into the water. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind when you're doing your maintenance because you don't want to get rid of your whole bacteria colony all at once when you're doing maintenance because then you'll have to do the cycle over again and it'll be dangerous for your fish. Um, so um, one thing that I recommend to help, um, most people, uh, my videos are really intended for beginners. Um, I'm relatively new to the hobby and I'm trying to share what I know. So most of you are going to have a hang on back filter. That's the most common filter, especially for beginners, especially on small and medium tanks. Larger tanks will often have canister filters, um, which are a bit different. Um, and honestly, their canister filters are um, harder to or more expensive to set up and maintain um, at first. But if you have a large tank, they're more efficient and more economical in the long run. Um, you also, they take up a lot of space, so you need to have a, a relatively large setup and large space to kind of justify all the, the real estate in your house or in your room it's going to take up. Um, so most of you are going to have a hang-on back filter, which, just like it sounds, it's a filter that's hanging on the side of your tank, usually on the back. It's got a pole sticking down that's sucking water up, putting it into a tank up here, and then it's flowing through cartridges usually. Um, that are usually like a white, uh, spongy, foamy looking stuff, and there's often activated carbon in there, and then it spits it out as a little waterfall at the top of your tank. That's a hang on back filter in a nutshell. Um, if you have a filter like that, um, and you take out your filter cartridges once they're, you know, spent, they're all clogged up and nasty, and you throw them away and put in new cartridges you've just thrown away most of your good bacteria. So that's kind of dangerous, honestly. Um, what I recommend is adding something to your hang on back filter to help support uh, a bacteria colony. I have a larger filter, um, a larger hang on back filter, so I have room in the tank uh, of it for uh, the filter tank itself, the filter reservoir. I have room in there for bio balls. I recommend putting something. I really am happy with the bio balls. I can fit one inch bio balls in mine. They make smaller bio balls that are about a half inch. Um, if your tanks, if your filter is big enough for those, I recommend those. If it's not big enough for those, go to the pet store and get either filter foam or filter sponge. They're very similar. They're practically the same thing. Um, these are just really, really porous. Um, sponge or foam materials that um, are not treated with any chemicals. Like if you go buy like a cleaning sponge at the grocery store, it's got antimicrobial chemicals on it so that it doesn't mildew or get stinky real fast. That's bad for your tank. You don't want that. That'll kill the bacteria in your filter. So you go to the pet store, get a pet foam filter uh, or filter foam or filter sponge. You can cut it up with a pair of scissors so it fits comfortably. Um, and put that in your reservoir. Don't block the reservoir. You don't want to stop the flow of water or anything, but just have some surface in there for bacteria. That way, when you change out your filter cartridges, you can rinse off the foam or the sponge in some tank water, not tap water because the chlorine will kill the bacteria. Rinse it out in some old tank water and put it right back in. It'll, it'll be good and reusable practically forever. Um, just don't let it get clogged up 
just rinse it out in tank water every time you do your regular maintenance and you'll be fine. Bio balls, the same thing. They're good forever as long as you don't let them get clogged up with gunk. Just rinse them out in some tank water when you do your maintenance and then put them right back. Um, no big deal. Um, let's see. So that's kind of everything that matters and that's the same between them. The only other thing that's really going to be common between them is when you go to actually add fish to your tank. Don't fill your tank up all at once. You want to add <clears throat> um, a few at a time, depending on the size of your tank. Um, my rule of thumb that I've used and had good luck with is about a 25% population at a time, except for when you're starting out with a fish cycle, which watch that video to find out. Um, that's probably the cycle most of you are going to use because most people. Um, are impatient and that lets you put fish in really soon so that's what most of you will probably end up doing and that's fine um, but just watch the video because that one will be a little different for all the other cycles um, I do about 25 percent of the population at a time in between adding fish um, let it go a week or two and be testing your water regularly to make sure you're not spiking anything toxic um, your, um, let me think, your toxic levels for ammonia, you pretty much want to keep that under one part per million. If it gets, um, above one, it's going to be really stressful, potentially a few deaths. If it gets above two, probably very likely to have some deaths and some unhealthy fish. They'll get much more prone to sickness. Um, if it gets as high as three or four parts per million, you're practically guaranteed to lose most of them. Nitrite, the second stage in the cycle. Um, generally, when you're in the process of cycling, you want that to stay under 10 parts per million. It's, a lot, it's uh, not, not as toxic as ammonia, but still pretty dangerous. So generally around 10 parts per million. Um, some people I've heard use the rule of thumb of 20 parts per million. Um, rather be safe than sorry, so I would go with around 10. Um, with nitrate, the final step in the cycle, uh, safety is under 40 parts per million, 40. Um, anything above that starts to become dangerous. Anything above like 100, um, you're going to start seeing deaths. Um, so you want to keep that really for them to be healthiest and happiest, you want to keep it under 40. Um, so one part per million, 10 parts per million, 40 parts per million. Those are kind of your thresholds, your maximums. Um, if your tank approaches one of these maximums, and your then your it means your bacteria is not grown sufficiently enough to combat it by itself. Um, and the way to stop that growth or that increase in toxic levels is to do a water change. Um, when you're in the process of cycling, um, you'll be doing water changes, depending on how you're cycling, two to three times a week. Once you're done with your cycling, you'll probably be fine doing it every week or every other week, depending on your population. Um, and uh, as far as how much of a water change to do, um, lots of people have different advice, 25%, 50%, 33%, whatever. It doesn't really matter how much of the water you change, so long as you change enough of it that the toxic risk goes away. So, um, if your ammonia's at one part per million, and you do a 50% water change, and your tap water doesn't contain any ammonia of its own, then you're theoretically down to half a part per million. So, it's pretty straightforward. Um, trace amounts of these three pieces of the cycle, um, depending on your water supply, could be in your tap water too. So it's not like a pure divide by two if you do a 50% thing, but roughly. Um, the bigger your tank is, the more forgiving it is. A lot of people think, oh, I got a small 10-gallon tank, it'll be easy to do. That's not the case exactly, because... It takes a very small amount of ammonia for a tank that size to spike a dangerous level because it's all about concentration. 
if you have a really large tank and you add fish to it, they're contributing, they're not adding up to as high a percentage of your threshold as they would in a smaller tank. So your bigger tanks are more forgiving. Um, once you're done cycling and your tank's all set up um, and you've got the right population, healthy population, all size tanks should theoretically take about the same amount of maintenance every one to two weeks, depending on how populated you are. Um, so once you're set up, you're good. It's just that smaller tanks, if something starts to go bad, it goes really bad fast instead of in a larger tank where you've got a little more wiggle room to kind of catch a problem before it becomes dangerous. So um, during the process of cycling, I recommend testing your water at least every two or three days. I use the API Master Test Kit. It's very good. Um, depending on sales and coupons, it'll be anywhere from $20 to $40 in a major pet store. Um, it's worth it. Get it. Um, if you can't get that, get one of the less expensive ones, but make sure you have a way to test for ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. Um, probably pH is going to be important for you. Um, and uh, so have a test kit available. While you're doing your cycling, be testing every two to three days so that you can do a water change immediately if you need to. Um, when you're fully cycled and all set up and all populated and everything, you can relax a little bit. Um, I usually do a test about once a week, um, usually right before I do my regular maintenance. Um, that way I can make sure that nothing's getting out of line. Um, so I know like if I do it like the day of my maintenance and I do it right before my maintenance then and I do my maintenance very regularly, then that's the, whatever levels I read are theoretically where I maxed out before I changed a bunch of water. So as long as that's not getting anywhere too bad, then I know that I'm staying on a good schedule and everything's staying safe. If you experience a spike in something that's dangerous, check more often for a little while just in case. Once it levels off again, uh, you know, go back to once a week or so. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to talk the three ways that I'm going to talk about cycling are going to be fishless cycle, a fish cycle, and an instant cycle. Um, most of you are going to be doing the fish cycle. Um, that's the most common one for beginners. Um, um, so read or uh, watch that. Um, check out the other ones too. The fish less cycle is considered the most humane by most people because you do it without live fish in your tank. So uh, you have much reduced risk of accidentally killing a fish due to new tank syndrome. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. The instant cycle, um, check it out if you have a friend who lives nearby with an already established healthy cycled tank. If you don't have a friend that has a healthy cycled tank, um, that's the same kind of water that you want to do, salt water or brackish water or fresh water. If you don't have a friend nearby with, with a tank that you can use, um, then skip that one because you can't do it. Um, there might be other ways to cycle that I don't know about, but these are the three that I know about. And then the silent cycle I mentioned that I don't know the details of, so look that up elsewhere if you're interested. Um, and enjoy my videos. Enjoy your tanks. Bye, guys.